Okay, pretty sure I've mentioned this device a few times in previous videos, so f*** it. Here is a list on TrueReview's own top 10 personal fave games on the Vita. But take into consideration that I'm still quite new to this system, and haven't had a chance to play some of the bigger titles, or maybe some that you'd be expecting to see on here, and I don't give a f***. Oh, by the way, the usual only one title per franchise rule is off the table this time, as is the rule on no HD versions that also exist on console. Just to give away a couple of entries early. So yeah, here we go. Hatsune Miku, Project Diva 2nd F. Okay, yeah, I know. A weird and very Japanese one to begin with, but let's face it, most of the games on here are going to be Japanese. But Hatsune Miku is without a doubt one of the most entertaining and ruthless rhythm games that I've ever come across. It's a bright and colourful looking game that will draw you in with its gorgeous visuals and suspiciously catchy music, and then will proceed to bombard you with what can only be described as an assault of quick time events and button prompts. Don't let that put you off though, as once you get the hang of it, you'll be blasting your way through its huge library of tracks, unlocking new ones, and buying different costumes so that you can get the lead singer to do her songs whilst dressed as a cat. Don't deny it, we've all done it. Freedom Wars Fans of Orwell's 1984-style sci-fi dystopian settings will fall at the sight of this title, and then there's the gameplay. It's the distant future, and mankind has drained the Earth of all its resources. And space travel hasn't been invented yet. You are part of one of the few remaining factions, known as Panopticons, as a sinner, someone who contributes nothing to the betterment of society. The punishment for such a crime is one million years in prison. The only way to reduce this ridiculous sentence is to go on hostile and dangerous missions and contribute resources to your oppressive overlord. The atmosphere is excellent in this game, as your all-seeing observers are constantly watching what you do and will punish you with more time in prison for even the most slightest of infractions, such as taking a nap lying down or speaking to someone of the opposite sex. The story is great, but the combat is just as exciting, with a third-person tactical hack-and-slash style where you can fight other sinners and giant robots with both sword and gun. It's a title that all Vita owners should try at least once. Final Fantasy X HD Remastered An obvious entry, but there's a reason why you'd expect this to be here. We all know about Final Fantasy X, and this is as the title says, it's a HD remastered version. What's nice about this one is that the gameplay and original content has been kept intact, and only the graphics have been changed. For those of you who have never played Final Fantasy X before, go and play Final Fantasy X. This is coming from someone who isn't too big on the JRPG genre. Story? Great. Visual aesthetics? Great. Combat? Really great. Characters? Um, not even remotely good, but that's just me. <laughs> but this is a graphically enhanced version of one of gaming's most well-known titles, so go figures alright, of course it was going to come up. Lane Goodman. Seven. Wipeout 2048 As said in my Top 10 Racing Games video, this is one of the best racing titles out there. High speeds, hairpin bends, with loads and loads of guns and explosives. Add in strippers and some beer, and you've got the ultimate man's game. The word high speed gets thrown around a lot in racing games these days, but I have to admit that that word fits perfectly in with this one. Including fast paced action, loads of explosives and bullets flying everywhere, an unhealthy amount of flashing lights and destruction thrown into the mix, well, you're looking at what's on the screen right now, yeah? That's just standard for this game. Metal Gear Solid HD Collection One of my guilty pleasures. Metal Gear Solid 3 was a solid game, no pun intended. So to see that there was a HD re-release on the Vita made me do a cartwheel. I didn't actually do a cartwheel. Same as the Final Fantasy X entry, 
the original awesome game kept intact, but with a shiny new coat, Snake Eater HD on the Vita is Snake Eater the game that we all remember, but in HD, and on the Vita. I mean seriously, the biggest selling point of this was that I could carry MGS3 in my pocket. I could play that game at any point, so why would I not buy this game? Oh, and you get Sons of Liberty in HD as well, which is riding on it, yeah. Virtue's last reward. Not gonna lie to you, most of the entries from this point on are made by Spike Chunsoft. Virtue's last reward is the second game in the Zero Escape series, of which there are only two in the trilogy so far, and we're still sitting here wondering if number three is ever gonna get made, but that's another story. You play the part of Sigma. You've been kidnapped, are working in a warehouse with eight other people, and a strange bracelet is on your wrist that has the number three on it. Your goal is to get that number to nine and escape through the number nine door. To do that, you must solve logic puzzles and play the nonary game in which you must either ally with or betray other characters in a game of trust. But should your number reach zero, then you shall die. Players who are familiar with Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors will feel right at home with this one, seeing as it is the sequel. The plot is dark and messed up. The puzzles are mostly logic based, some moon logic based, and its characters are all incredibly diverse and interesting. With a very clever plot twist, an atmosphere that's as twisted as its writing, and gameplay mechanics that will force you to use parts of your brain that you probably never use normally, Virtue's Last Reward is a story-heavy game that draws you in and won't let you leave until you've seen all of its endings in all of their gruesome glory. Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc If you've watched my parody series on this game, then you should know how much I love it. Story, characters, atmosphere, investigations, and everything that's to be had here is 10 out of 10. A setting that's dark, quite gothic, and absolutely 100% messed up, but in the style of an anime series, Danganronpa will go to great lengths in establishing a wide variety of interesting and unique characters, and then spend the rest of the game systematically killing them off. I've seen this game described as Shin Megami Ace Attorney, and I think that, that sums it up lovely. If you're not familiar with either of those series, then take the film Battle Royale, mix in a bit of LA Noir, and then add in some Death Note, and that's as close as I can get this description to go. Being very, very heavy in story, though this is a visual novel, this game does get you to make friends with many interesting people, forces you to watch them get killed, and then gets you to investigate the crime scene and bring the truth to light in a class trial in which you'll end up getting another character killed. It was those three words to save my life. Steins Gate The newest game out of all of these, unless you live in either Japan, China or Korea, in which case you can wipe that smug look right off your face, Steins Gate is possibly one of the greatest stories ever told. If you're familiar with the anime, then it's pretty much the same except with a couple of differences. Though this is a visual novel, the game actually includes a lot more scenes and elements that were removed when the anime was produced, meaning that this is the complete package. You'll also have the chance to get multiple endings, in which you'll be given certain choices from time to time, meaning that you can end up with a completely different ending from the one that you're most likely familiar with. That aside, it's still the same old Steins Gate as before, just as laughter-inducing, tear-jerking, and heartwarming as before. Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair Look back to entry number 4. Well, it's exactly the same except better. I mean, I loved everything about the last one, but this one just took all of the creamy goodness from before and just made it even better. And I still don't understand how they managed to do that. The characters are so much more interesting, the story is so, so bizarre and f***ed up, and yet you just can't put it down for a second. There's twists and turns for newcomers and veterans alike, meaning that everyone's catered for. The soundtrack is incredible, and I think I just came in my pants. One of the greatest video game stories I've ever come across, a game that will keep you guessing, and I'm not even going to touch on the plot twist because it's just going to f*** with your head so much that you think that your head has reproductive organs or something. 
this is definitely a recommendation from me. Um, if you own a Vita, that is. One more time. Are you seriously going to make me say it? It's at the top of everyone's list. Ah, uh, fine. Persona 4 Golden. There's a reason why it's at the top of everyone's list. Hell, it's the one and only reason why I ended up buying a PSV. If you love Persona 4, which you'll be shot if you don't by the way, just kidding, but seriously, then you can't help fall head over heels in love with Persona 4 Golden, which is the definitive edition I might add. The PSP version of Persona 3 saw some criticism for being a watered down and hacked a bits version of the original, so Atlas wasn't going to make the same mistake twice with the Persona series. In fact, when it came time for Persona 4 to get a handheld version, Atlas decided to throw in even more stuff. More events, more quests, a new character and plot elements, new jobs, more social links, actually getting to leave the house every night without Dojima-san throwing the TV at us. Basically everything that was in the first version was expanded and improved on. It's Persona 4 and then some. It's an improved version of one of the best games of all time, and I'm gonna have to leave you now because this is making me want to play Persona 4 Golden, so I'm just gonna leave my Twitter details on here, and the outro, so yeah, like and subscribe, and see ya!